Hello and welcome back to this channel. Without wasting the time, let us dive into the topic. Today's topic is linear filtering of long data sequences. This topic is related to digital signal processing that is DSP. There are two methods. One is overlap serve method and another is overlap add method. Before discussing these methods, let us understand what is the basic concept. I have drawn the block diagram. Now, the heading is linear filtering. It is also called as linear convolution. The basic meaning of filtering is removing of noise signals contained in the original signal. So this is the block diagram. The notations are X of N stands for input signal, which we want to filter out. H of N is called as impulse response of the system. And Y of N is the output. Usually, output of the system is expressed as X of N asterisk H of N. This notation asterisk is called as convolution. Now, if you want to perform convolution in the discrete domain, many operations are required. To avoid the complications, we will be performing it using DFT, that is discrete Fourier transformation. So if you use DFT, DFT of X of N is denoted by big X of K. Always capital notations are used in DFT. Similarly, DFT of H of N will be denoted by capital H of K and DFT of Y of N will be denoted by capital Y of K. What steps will be following, following throughout the discussion? First, we'll be forming different blocks. Then we will calculate DFT of X of N and H of N. And third, we'll calculate IDFT of Y of N. We'll discuss this thing in detail. But one more thing, why this is required in practical applications? We know that all these applications are performed by a device which is called as DSP processor. The processor has a limited memory. Suppose I have a long data sequence which contains 1000 samples. Now I have to filter out each and every sample. So naturally huge memory will be required. To avoid this, what I will be doing, I will be forming different blocks of this input uh, sequence which contains 1000 sample let us say i will form 100 blocks each block will contain 10 samples what i will be doing i will be selecting first 10 samples i will apply it to the filter filter will filter out these samples after completion of this i will apply next 20 samples then next 20 likewise i will be completing the process so instead of filtering 1000 samples at a stretch. What do you need to do? Form different blocks. As I said, suppose we are forming 100 blocks. 100 is just one example. Then each block will contain 10 samples. Perform the filtering of each block and then finally add all the blocks to generate the output sequence which is similar to the original sequence. So we'll discuss these two methods that is overlap serve and overlap add method in detail. The first method is overlap save method. As an example, we will consider a sequence X of N whose values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, and so on till infinity. As I said, if you want to filter out this entire signal which is having the long length, length means number of samples contained in the sequence, then lot of memory space is required. I want to avoid this technique. So, I have to form different blocks. Now recall the notations. The number of samples in X of N is denoted by L. Number of samples in H of N is denoted by M. And the number of samples which are generated after filtering is denoted by N. That means Y of N contains N number of samples. The formula to calculate Y of, uh, to calculate value of N is L plus M minus 1. For the simplicity, I will assume some values. Let us say, I will consider L is equals to 5, M is equals to 4. These are just, I have taken these values just for the sake of calculations, no technical reason. Then, using this equation, I will get L plus M minus 1. That means value of N will be 8. So, I need to form a smaller blocks of this input sequence X of N. Each block 
will contain eight samples because as per these calculations l plus m minus 1 and due to this assumed values i am getting n is equal to 8 what is the rule the rule for overlap sway method is take m minus 1 samples from the previous block and then take l samples from exopian it's confusing now listen i will make it more simple what i said i have to form different blocks each block will contain eight samples so we have considered value of m is equal to 4 that means i will get m minus 1 which is equal to 3 so what is the rule take three samples from previous block and then add five samples from exopian so that length of each block will be eight how to do it let us denote first block by x of n. What is the rule? Take m minus 1, that is 3 samples, 3 samples from the previous block, but x1 of n is the first block, there is no previous history, so I need to take 3 blocks as per the rule, 3 block, 3 samples from the previous block, but x1 of n don't have any previous block, so I will write 3 zeros initially. These are three samples which is supposed to be taken from previous block. As I said, there is no previous block, so I am writing three, three zeros. After that, rule is take L, that is take five samples from exopian. Naturally, I will be taking these first five samples. So it will be one, two, three, four, five. These are M minus one, that is three samples which we have taken from the previous that means three zeros and these are L means five samples I have to take it from exopian this is the formation of first block what about second block x2n now see for the second block we have the availability of first block previous block for x2 of n is x1 of n what is the rule take m minus one that means take three samples from the previous for x2 of n, previous block is x1 of n. So I will be taking last three samples from x1 of n. Why not first three samples? Very simple. First three samples are zeros, which we have supposed to take it from the previous block. There was no previous block, so I have written zeros. So as per the rule, I have to take three samples from previous block for x2 of n. For x2 of n, previous block is x1, so I will be taking last three samples of x1 of n that is 3 4 5 these are m minus 1 samples from x1 of n from the previous block that is three samples then i need to add l that is five samples from x1 of n we have already taken these samples in x1 of n so take next five samples that means these samples so sequence will be minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 these are next l samples so i will write next five samples from original sequence x of n suppose i want to form one more block that is x3 of n same rule for x3 of n previous block is x2 of n again take three samples from x2 of n I will have to take last three samples, so it will be minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. These are m minus 1, that is three samples from the previous block. And now take next, this, this we have already covered. Now take next five samples, so it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are the next five samples from x1 of n. Likewise, I will be forming different blocks. So we did the first step. What do we did? The original sequence was having infinity duration. So what I did, I have made a small blocks. Length of each block is eight. Accordingly, I have formed the different blocks. Now, next step is after forming different blocks, what we need to do? Take the DFT of each block. That means DFT of X1 of N will be x1 of k then dft of x2 of n will be x2 of k and so on next this is about x of n h of n that is impulse response 
contains the samples. So as per our discussion, length of H of n is four. That means there are four samples. We are not interested in values. So just I will write the numbers one, two, three, four. These are the four samples which is contained in H of n because we have considered m is equals to four. As an example, I am considering few values. Next, this length should be again made equals to eight. So I need to add four zeros at the end. Do remember addition of zeros to adjust the length of sequence. This effect is called as zero padding. So addition of zeros in any sequence to adjust the length of sequence is called as zero padding. Why I, I why I have added the zeros? This is because we have considered m is equals to four. What m indicates? M indicates length of sequence h of n. That means number of samples in h of n. There are four samples in h of n. I need to make length equals to eight. So I will have to add four samples. Then take DFT of h of n that is denoted by h of k. So what we did? We calculated DFT of x1 of n that is x1 of k. Then for x2 of n that is x2 of k. Likewise, we will be calculating DFT of all input blocks. Then we will calculate DFT of h of n that is h of k. Next step will be take multiplication like this. So first output block will be y1 of k is x1 of k into h of k. Second output block y2 of k is equals to x2 of k into h of k. Likewise, we will be forming different output blocks. Now, this is the calculation using DFT. End user always wants the result in normal domain. So, I need to calculate IDFT, that is inverse DFT of each block. So, inverse DFT of y1 of k is denoted by y1 of n. Inverse DFT of y2 of k is denoted by y2 of n and so on. Dear students, remember what we did. We have formed different blocks of the input signal and we have filtered, we have performed the calculation of DFT and IDFT. That means we filter each block separately, but the original sequence was still infinity. It was not in the form of blocks. For our convenience, we have formed different blocks. So finally, for the end user, I need to join all the blocks one after other. Like, let us say this is the block of y1 of n. After that, I will connect the block of y2 of n. And likewise, I will be connecting different blocks. But the problem is that to adjust the length of uh, sequence, we have added few samples, that is three samples, which we have taken from the previous block. So there are repetition of samples. To avoid this, when you will be joining each output block, discard first three values. That means first three samples will discard it because we have taken it from the previous block. Similarly, for y to happen, discard first three samples. So after discarding, every first three samples of each block join all the blocks one after other it is called as overlap save method next method is overlap add method it is slightly different from the previous method which was overlap save method we'll consider same sequence x of n same values just for the simplicity again n is l plus m minus 1 consider l is 5 m is Four, same as the previous one so capital N is 8 now in this case in this method how to form different blocks first block x1 of n keep in mind the length that means number of samples in each block should be 8 so this is straightforward method to form each block take L that is take 5 samples value of L is 5 take 5 samples from x of n so I will be taking first 5 samples so I will be writing it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But I want its length to be 8. So I will add 3 zeros just to adjust the length of segments. Second block, x2 of n. What I did initially for x1 of n, I have taken first 5 samples. Here in this method, we don't have to take any samples from the previous block. Just go on adding the zeros at the end. So I have already taken these five samples from original sequence x of n. Take next five samples. So it will be minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. 
again these are five samples so i will be adding three zeros at the end to adjust the length of segments which should be equal to x similarly if you want to generate x3 of n then it will be now i have taken these samples take next five samples that is 1 2 3 4 5 and again i will be adding three zeros likewise we will be forming different blocks now like the previous method take dft of first block that is x1 of k then take dft of second block x2 of k and so on similarly obtain dft of h of n that is denoted by h of k it is similar to the previous method next output each block that is y1 of k is equals to x1 of k into h of k similarly the second block y2 of k is x2 of k into h of k as discussed in previous method this is the output which is in dft domain we want the output in normal domain so perform idft that is inverse dft so after calculating idft you will be getting y1 of n then y2 of n y3 of n and so on these are the notations for output block in normal domain in discrete domain after completion of filtering now there is a big catch in this method See, I got outputs y1 of n, y2 of n, y3 of n, and so on. But these outputs are related to the blocks x1 of n, x2 of n, and x3 of n. Each block was containing zeros at the end. How many number of zeros were there? There were three zeros at the end of each block. So what happens if you if you directly suppose this is the block of y1 of n? This is the block of y1 of n. I will just connect y2 of n just after y1 of n as it is. What happens? This y1 of n contains last three samples, which are zeros. Then y2 of n starts again. Y2 of n contains last three zeros, and so on. So there will be gaps in the transmission of signal. To avoid this, what we have to do? See. Consider this sequence y1 of n. I don't have to directly add one block after the other because the reason I have already mentioned there are last three zeros contained in each block. Now to avoid this, what I will be doing? Consider this is the block of y1 of n where there are three zeros at the end. For y2 of n, I have written random values. The values can be anything. So suppose first three values are one, two, three, and remaining values can be anything. What I will be doing instead of connecting y2 of n after y1 of n, I will overlap first three samples of y2 of n with three zeros of y1 of n. That means every time while joining the block, whatever block you are going to join, take the overlap of first three samples and add it with the zeros of the previous block, like as shown in this diagram. Y1 of n contains last three elements which are zeros. I will overlap the first three samples of y2 of n with zeros, and I will add it. Everyone knows if you add anything with the zeros, answer remains same. So effect of addition of zeros will be nullified. Likewise, uh, uh, if you want to add another block y3 of n, then I know that in y2 of n again last three samples are zero. So I will not connect y3 of n just after y2 of n. I will do it like this. First three samples of y3 of n will be overlapped with the zeros and then added. Likewise, the different output sequences are generated and connected one after the other. Dear students, I have explained the two methods: overlap sort method and overlap add method, which are prime important as far as the practical applications of uh, DSP are considered. Once again, why those methods are important? Because DSP processor has the limited memory, so we are forming the different blocks and we are performing the filtering of each block separately, and then we are cascading the blocks. So that's it for today's lecture. If you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe the channel. Thank you very much.